institutionalized uh, and we call something called a hospital started at Hospitalia in Germany and then became a hospice in somewhere around the UK and became a hospital. And now a few people got involved in this uh, rightly uh, 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 mother of uh, nursing uh, uh, Florence Nightingale, the name was mentioned. She was instrumental in having cleaner uh, Moyali and uh, more having more light in the wards. So uh, let's look at uh, the today's issues. We are challenge here in a challenging environment. Uh, we have heavy patient loads, and then uh, there are a lot of constraints in run the hospital of the human resources, and then uh, it's actually a high risk risk environment uh, because uh, it's it's uh, if you validate the risk analysis on the hospital versus uh, traveling to moon. I mean, moon travel to moon and coming back is much. Uh, you have a better chance than going to a hospital and coming out alive. So that, that is an area that, because we created super bugs, we, we segregated people into hospitals, we promoted them to come. Now it's a world order with patients uh, with a high cost, which uh, every government has to pay for. And um, are we, 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 then we have to look at the outputs. Are we really treating the number of patients that we want to treat? Or, and what are the outcomes? Those are the questions that we have at the moment. Um, the healthcare, healthcare consumers' behavior is slowly but surely changing. Nobody wants to be in a hospital because of the mentioned issues. And uh, they're moving away from the hospital towards home. You would see in England, uh, more and more home delivery is becoming, a, it's becoming popular and uh, more, more demand for uh, nursing midwives. Uh, in England and more and more people are going towards wellness uh, they don't want to be till you're ill so there's wellness concept coming in uh, and uh, I, Mr. Randini rightly said we are trying to create a home a homely environment in the hospital and will there be a home hospital will the GP get a more that the GP would have a more contribution to play in the whole business of healthcare the other areas Slowly but surely, there's a, there's a different uh, movement towards the development of the medical technology. You would see, in, instead of just uh, having a theatre, for example, we have hybrid theatres coming in, where the image-guided precision surgeries are done. And on top of that, uh, interventional surgeries and uh, more are evidence-based. Uh, you're not looking at the previous evidence, it's the evidence on time, real time. You can just go there and take that tumor out, then and there, with the minimum uh, uh, injuries to the patient. Um, similarly, you get uh, the development of health informatics, and the informatics uh, is a big area that uh, Sri Lanka has a health informatics society, headed by Professor Vajal Desanayaka, doing a wonderful work all these uh, years, and uh, uh, they will get involved more in College of Administrators in years to come to work with more sustainable uh, health information systems. Um, there's this thing called wearables coming in. Uh, wearables are the devices that you uh, can wear and monitor your patients. It could be eye wearables, ear wearables, wristables. Those are coming in. So this moves into a, a thing called a big data analysis. All this data will be gathered in one place. And this uh, patient's data will be analyzed. It's called beta, big data analysis, which would definitely allow us to treat patients in a better environment and uh, you need not to get the patient into the hospital, you can monitor them at home. And of course the telemedicine, that also uh, where the telecommunication supporting delivery of healthcare uh, with the help of the uh, hospital information systems, that will also reduce the burden on the hospital. Um, and on top of that, uh, this was mentioned by Mr. Pendra. Uh, there's a massive evolution of genetics and genetic profiling developed on biomedical science where biomarkers uh, are used to treat diseases. So this will allow us to predict diseases and then uh, give personalized medicine. These are the more popular words in the Western world that they are using. And then on top of that, there's a uh, regeneration of tissues and replacing body parts. So all these would uh, get uh, uh, us to a, a tomorrow's hospital where there's more homebound hospitals. You'd like to have their care to their home front, 
and then uh, there's more uh, IT oriented support to deliver healthcare and then uh, of course uh, genetic profiling and personalized medicine. Uh, this brings up to the, the to, I was trying to define hospital, how hospital could be. There are many defined definitions in all over the world and uh, most importantly the, gathering all these points together uh, that we have to send the patients home as well as we receive the patient in a, in a, in a dignified and uh, more honorable way uh, and then of course uh, we have our standards to adhere to um, then we will do the whole gamut of prevention investigation and treatment of course the rehabilitation patients and of course uh, we should exceed the patient's uh, uh, expectation for satisfying the patient so now in this context we, we all know as medical administrators we are given a budget and uh, one politician would come and say we are going to expand this hospital then there's a big rush to design the hospital. It is always, always been the case. So therefore, um, so we are, we are forbidden to blame at the end if you don't put up an effective and efficient hospital. So it's, uh, hospital is the most complex building uh, uh, to build uh, because it's not only a, a co-patient care, there's supportive care and all that to, to come in. Um, so to rush to design hospital, we can't stop it. We are in an environment that people would rush us to do hospital. So I think better planning, uh, better forecasting would come uh, give us a better leverage uh, to, to sustain in this industry. Um, what are the issues that uh, typically we face in a hospital uh, in, in, in building construction? Uh, the geographical location in terms of the access and of course the facility access for you know disabled or the patients are disabled because you consider them as disabled people. And of course, the administrative access, operationally how we allow these people to come in. Uh, and the quality of facility are not even, um, even though the, the currently the government, the Minister of Health is working on a uh, Australian healthcare system, so besides these quality standards will come in. And then, um, are we resolving the total problem of the patient or the part of the problem? Um, so, um, are we looking at the other democratic and the other detail, health determinants coming into the building, building the hospital? Uh, understand the trends and uh, evolution of uh, medical advancement, and then, uh, of course, uh, different cultures would expect different. Uh, they have different expectations in terms of the hospital services, and then, of course, the community, and most importantly, uh, do we have a program? Are we, do we have a proper program if tomorrow somebody walks into your hospital and asks you, I have uh, 100 million rupees, what do you want to do doctor? So do we have a program? Have we done research in our hospitals sector? Uh, what are the deficiencies? Uh, do we have a master plan in our hospitals? And have we had discussions with our staff and the others? Those are the general issues that we have at the moment. Um, this brings uh, me to uh, give you an insight to the typical uh, phases in a uh, hospital project. Uh, there is more depending on the hospital cons uh, hospital size and the scale. Uh, but generally, you have project development. You have to get together, spend more time on developing the project, and then uh, the wonderful architects like uh, Mr. Lukshan and the uh, uh, Mr. Randenia, they would support us in design. Uh, there's a approval process, uh, uh, there's about almost 24 approval processes in the, if you're doing one in hospital, in the private sector, uh, there's construction, you have to do civil construction, mechanical and engineering, uh, equipment management is a big area in hospitals, human resource planning, supplies management, they put up operational systems, uh, then uh, software and the IT systems will come in. And then commissioning is a massive, very sensitive area. And then finally, uh, you look at the operational management in the hospital. Uh, in the project development phase, as I told you, I have to spend more time on this. And then uh, we have to do a feasibility study. Uh, every hospital should have a feasibility done, individual hospitals, irrespective of the size and size of the hospital and geographical location. Um, then once you do that, if it's a new hospital, we build up a concept. Uh, and then comes the medical services plan, which is my top of, topic proper. Uh, we uh, develop a model 
hospital model, what type of a model we are going to put in, and then uh, how we are going to build it is a project model. Uh, soon after, we will develop the space program in each individual areas, how it should be, and the size and the scale, and then, of course, the, we have to consider the finances. Uh, then the architects will come in and support. Uh, we support the architects to do a thing called architect's brief, uh, which is an important document in build, designing and building hospitals. Then we will move into the design phase where the conceptual designs, the line diagrams, and then the detail, the detail designs are done. So let me go into the medical program planning. Um, this is the most medical program planning is a comprehensive document or a description uh, on a plan medical services uh, delivered in the proposed hospital. Um, uh, a sound medical plan would definitely support you to give a, uh, give a better, uh, very efficient, very effective and also uh, 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 a more uh, flexible hospital. What I meant by a more flexible hospital, it allows you to uh, expand your product portfolio, your service levels, it allows you to uh, expand your infrastructure if you have planned it well. Um, then once you have a proper medical plan, program plan, then it supports not only building the hospital but also the other uh, project development fa project phases I mentioned such as human resource and equipments, operations, quality etc. Um, uh, what is a medical, pro uh, a medical program? Um, this a description of this program uh, medical services uh, it's a totally responsibility lies with the hospital administrator but uh, it's a it's a teamwork you have to get your doctors nurses paramedics uh, and especially the infection control team and uh, of course work with the hospital designers from there onwards um, generally we do it for we typically do it for 30 years we expect the hospital would uh, the building would last for 30 years uh, and then um, uh, develop the area to places and of course the quality standard, that part quality level that you are trying to deliver these programs. And uh, look at the other uh, uh, administrative and support services uh, areas as well. Um, at this point you can look at uh, some of the areas you can outsource uh, some of the services. So you need not to build in the design and then uh, you can link some of the services. For example, you need not to have MRI if it's available in a close by hospital linking with the other medical services. Um, this is the typically formulation of a medical service program. You do the feasibility, develop the concept of the hospital, then do the medical program, uh, then, then goes to the space programming and the architect's brief. Um, what are the ingredients in a proper feasibility? Uh, if you are going to conduct the one. Uh, first look at the demography and uh, we have to look at the age structure and what is its, its implication to uh, disease uh, health services and what are the services that we are going to uh, do it for the next few years. And uh, of course the disease trends and the patterns, uh, treatment trends, uh, then we have to look at the, uh, we all know how to do a SWOT analysis and uh, on top of that you might look at the market analysis and doing the porters, uh, five forces, uh, uh, most importantly uh, the funding methodology, finances and what is the appetite for the uh, investors, uh, your investor would be Ministry of Health or the, uh, the government. Um, then uh, with this you can uh, slowly but uh, surely organize the formulation of the medical service plan. How will you do that? You put up an uh, initial plan uh, with the support of the uh, feasibility and uh, have a discussion with uh, respective specialists. It's very important because the new specialists will bring you knowledge as well as they would know uh, better than us what the new trends are. Uh, then look at the, uh, talk to your senior medical administrators. They would give you uh, insights to how to uh, formulate getting through many obstacles. Um, then it's important to have a, a chat with the medical equipment uh, suppliers and the managers because they uh, frequently they get inputs uh, regarding the development of technology and what is available in Sri Lanka uh, and the cost. Uh, they write down a comprehensive description um, of the individual services in specific areas you mentioned and then um, uh, whilst you do that 
please look at the sustainability and the other uh, oh, other environmental aspects uh, what we heard in the morning and then finalize the plan. Uh, this is a very simple approach but it's though it looks simple it's a very complicated and important aspect of development of the uh, total uh, hospital. So these are the things I want to share with you uh, and of course uh, we will have uh, a little bit of time at the end to, uh, uh, to answer some other questions. Thank you.